When we're looking at quadratic equations, uh, we've been talking in, uh, before about um, what zeros are. They're either called zeros or roots or sometimes called x-intercepts. But the idea, of course, is to try to uh, mathematically find these places, you know, where these quadratic graphs are crossing the x-axis. In other words, they're trying to find these points like this, like here and here. I'll just erase that for now, but um, that's, that's the goal. Now we can of course do it uh, with graphing, but there's other ways too. And uh, so I'm gonna be talking to you about the, the, well, the four main ways to do it, including graphing. But before that, I just wanna show you why it is that it's a challenge to do this by hand. So let's say we wanna to try to find the zeros of this equation here. Now what do we mean by zeros? Again, they're either square roots or x-intercepts. So that means the first step is to make this, uh, maybe I'll change the color here, is to make this zero equals x squared minus 4x plus 1. Remember, because that's what a zero is, or a root, or x-intercept, right? An x-intercept is where y equals zero, so y is zero. So the issue is then, okay, what do I do now to get x on its own? The idea is to get x equals something. I mean, you might think, okay, well, uh, I guess what I'll try to do is maybe I'll move the one over. So minus one equals x, minus, uh, x squared minus 4x. You go, okay. Maybe I'll move the minus 4x over. So now it becomes minus 1 plus 4x equals x squared. So maybe that helps you out. And then you might think, okay, well, now what? Hmm. Well, I want to get x on its own here on the right, so maybe I'll divide both by x, you know, both sides. So if I divide everything by x, maybe, then I get it over x, over x. That means, you know, these right here will cancel out. So then I end up with... Uh, you know, minus 1 over x plus uh, 4x over x, but that means I'm just going to have equals like this. So here we go, great. And uh, the problem is, oh, it looks like I'm almost there. I have an x and I have an x here. So what do I do? Well, I want to move this one over, so maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll add it. So then I get, you know, 4 equals, um, so I mean, everything I'm doing right now are all legal, so to speak. They're all okay math things. Oops, except for this last thing. I just made a mistake. Right here, it's not a 4, it's an x. Okay, there we go. And then you think, well, what do I do now? Hmm, well, I have to, I want to get this right here on the top. So uh, maybe I should multiply everything by x. So then I get 4x equals x squared. Uh, plus one. And the problem is I'm actually pretty much back over here. See if I move this 4x back over then I would end up with 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus one. In other words I'm back where I started. So just using regular algebra rules even though everything I did here is allowed the problem is you don't really get anywhere. You sort of just spin your wheels, you do stuff, but it doesn't really get you where you need to be. And so that's why finding the x-intercepts mathematically is a bit more challenging. See, the y-intercepts are easy. Just set x equals 0 and away you go. But it turns out with a quadratic, setting y equals 0 makes it a little bit tough to find x. So that's why uh, there's... Well, I'm going to talk about four main ways to find the zeros of quadratics. So what are these four main ways? Well, one is, of course, by graphing. All right, so what do we do with graphing? Well, there, like I showed you before, we could, you know, draw, maybe do something like this. And then the x-intercepts, well, by graphing, I could see them, and maybe it's here and here. So that would work. That's one way of doing it. Um, a second way of doing it is by doing what's called, well, we can look at what's called a vertex form. In other words, if we can write a quadratic in a different form, it turns out then you can solve it. In order to get it into vertex form, though, we're going to do something called completing the square. Some students cringe when they hear that. But that's completing the square. But the idea will be to get it in a form that looks like this. Maybe it's like y, x minus h, all that squared, minus, uh, or plus k. I mean, something that's in this form, or something, if it looks like this form, uh, then you can solve it. Um, I'll be explaining this more in detail in uh, future videos, but for right now, just keep in mind that completing the square is one thing you could do. Another thing you could do 
is to actually factorize it or factor or I guess I'll say factoring. So if you could actually take a quadratic equation and factor it, uh, then it'll work. You can actually solve it. Um, and a fourth way is actually to use the quadratic equation. So it turns out uh, that's also a way of doing it. So graphing always works, but you don't always have a graphing calculator with you. Vertex form, it turns out that always works. Okay, so it always works, but it can be a bit long, but it always works at least. Okay, so there's an advantage there. Always works. That's for vertex form. Graphing, I suppose, always works. Maybe I just better be consistent here. So graphing, I could say that always works, but you often need a calculator for it. You don't always get that, let's say on a test or something like that. So you need a calculator and that's the problem with that one. This one is long, but it always works or it can be long. The factoring, I would actually say it um, doesn't always work. So not everything can factor, but when it does, Uh, then it's, um, I don't know, then Yahoo. I mean, I mean, when you do this, it's actually pretty good because when you can actually factor, this is actually a quick way of doing it, but not every quadratic can be factored. So I'll be explaining these uh, in a second here in the next uh, couple equations. I don't know why I said quadratic equatic. That looks really weird. Um, I hope you found that and spotted that. So this is actually supposed to be quadratic equation. Hopefully you're paying more attention than apparently when I'm writing and speaking, my brain doesn't always seem to work. A quadratic equation always works. But it's slightly ugly. I suppose if you have aesthetics, uh, you know, uh, involved in math, then maybe it's a little bit ugly, but it does always work. And so uh, some teachers insist on showing all the different ways. I think it's a good idea to be exposed to them, but the way I see this is you've just got to use tools for the job. I mean, if your job or so to speak, or um, you know, tools for, the, for what you need. So in other words, if your goal is to find the roots of quadratics, then you've got four main ways of doing it. Um, so the next couple of videos are going to be uh, showing each of these four ways. So graphing, I'm going to show you how to solve them by graphing. Uh, which is actually pretty straightforward. We've been doing that before. Uh, vertex form, I'm gonna show you what that means and how to actually complete the square in order to get it into the proper form. I'm gonna show you how to factor stuff because if it does factor, it makes things really easy and I think it's quite fast. My personal sort of go-to is I always try to factor it really quickly and if it doesn't work, then I do quadratic equation. That's just what I like, if I don't have a calculator allowed at least. And last is this quadratic equation, and I'm going to show you how to use it. And I'm going to round everything off by actually showing you where the derivation comes from for this. Because this equation doesn't just come from outer space. It doesn't come from the sky, so to speak. Uh, there is a reason for it, and I'll show you sort of where it comes from. Even though it's a bit ugly, but uh, I'll show you where it comes from. So that's where the next videos will be. It's all about how to find the roots of quadratic equations.